Hello friends, welcome back to the shop. Today is Sunday, April 18th. Ah, April just has not been a great month here. It's cold still. It's uh, going to be cloudy, somewhat sunny. We're actually going to get up to 60 today, which is nice, but ah, it just feels more like, uh, more like March than April. Smoking a, uh, this is my Lane Crown Achievement pipe. And I've got some LJ Peretti Cuban mixture in it. For a couple of reasons. I have a uh, 8 ounce tin of it down here. And I'm running low on Haunted Bookshop. Now that's that. It's got to be taken in a relative sense. So I'm running low on a haunted bookshop that I plan to smoke in the near future. I have pounds of it cellared. I'm, I'm not in any way uh, des in desperate need, <laughs> but uh, I like to buy mine from Smoking Pipes simply because it's the same company that you know Ladasi owns. Smoking pipes and they own Cornell and Deal, and I I don't know why, but for some reason that just seems right to me. So I like to buy it from Smoking Pipes, and I want to get some Haunted Bookshop, and I get some Pegasus, and I believe they're both out of stock right now. So I'll wait. I know they'll be back. We've been through this before with the Great Haunted Bookshop debacle of 2019. And then of 2020. However, 2020 and 2021 are the first times I remember this happening in the spring. It used to be an annual fall event, and I always explained it by, uh, you know, Halloween haunted bookshop. But uh, yeah, I don't know. And maybe my memory just isn't that good for, or maybe I just wasn't ordering in the spring. Anyway, until Honda Bookshop's back in stock, I've got mm, maybe enough to get me through, I don't know, two or three days. So I'm trying to limit myself to one or two bowls of that a day. Try to stretch it out for a while. And uh, enjoying some of the other things I've got in stock, like this Cuban mixture, which is excellent. I, I learned something this morning. I, I brought this. I chose this spi pipe. Mouth hasn't quite caught up with me yet. I chose this pipe uh, specifically because it needed to be reamed. Now it wasn't terrible. You know, I could still get my finger down in it, um, but it was a little embarrassing. You know, a guy that repairs pipes and says, "Don't let your cake grow too much." It, it was a lot of cake, so I decided to ream it before I smoked it this morning. And that's why it came down to the shop with me, and that's why I have it right now. And as I was reaming it, I was thinking about the haunted bookshop issue and all that, and I thought, you know, this is going to hold a lot more tobacco after I after I get all the cake out. And I realized that you know these these old pipes that I get sometimes, where you know you can you can't get your little finger down in there; that they're, they're so caked up. I wonder if that might have been a um, an economy measure. You know, you smoke less tobacco with each bowl. Or maybe it was a health thing. The more you smoke, the less you smoke, and they're for you. I don't know. <laughs> I just I just got interested in the fact that there is some relationship between the length of time that you smoke a pipe and the amount of tobacco that can be smoked in it if you don't ream it. I thought that was interesting. It's kind of a self-limiting process. The mathematician in me wants to uh, wants to make a plot. An economist would probably have some fun with that too. Yeah, this time of day, I was told not to apologize for the smoke, so I won't. 
But this time of day, the sun's coming right through that window, and it's wonderful. You know, it's nice to get that, that, even though it's still quite chilly out there, at least the sun is warm through the window. But it really highlights the smoke, and uh, I don't know, maybe I should use that to my effect. I always get this much smoke. Though. So, you probably noticed, uh, I put up a video on Friday that didn't last very long, and then it came back. Um, and I, I put up a post about this, but I wanted to say it in a video too. Uh, although probably not as pointedly as I said it in the post, because I don't want this video to get taken down. Um, no, there was nothing wrong with the video. You know, I, I was talking about hot button issues for sure and things that are currently in the media for sure um but what i said was actually consistent with what a lot of medical experts were saying and you know so they they took it down and they said that it uh, violated community guidelines and they specifically called out misinformation regarding um uh, a, a, a i don't want to say it because i don't want this to get flagged Misinformation regarding those uh, those jabs in the arm we're all supposed to be getting. Okay, that that's that's what they flagged me for, and it's funny because I think if anything, I was promoting those jabs more than trying to say anything negative about them in the video. So they they took it down. I appealed it, and in appealing it, I, I cited a. Uh, New York Times article that pretty much said the same thing that I was saying and said that, you know, this is in line with the thoughts of many medical experts, both in the U.S. and in Europe, and they, I'm, I'm quoting from the article. And, you know, YouTube, to their credit, within six hours, sent me a, you know, a, a form letter, but it was an apology, and uh, put the video back up. So, you know... I, I I see I see that as a good thing in a sense. I, I appreciate that there's a process that you can go through and you can get to a point where um, everybody's on the same page. But I I can think of you know I was I was on a line there and I could have very easily veered just like a millimeter to one side and I would not have been able to get that appeal. And I don't think that's right. You know, I, I think I think diversity of opinion and, and and diversity of interpretation of what we believe is true is you know that's the way science works. You know, that's how we move forward in science. We look at we look at some things. You know, that, that apple fell from the tree and hit me in the head. Maybe that's because the apple really wanted to be close to me. That's a hypothesis. Not true, but you but you but you think it, and you and you say, well, okay, is that, is that what you, know, you you can design experiments around? It. You can debate it with friends. You can you you can debate it publicly, and and you know you you come up with experiments to test, and then you test them. Well, maybe the apple was pulled to me by some force, and then you start to think, well, maybe maybe I'm irrelevant because the apple would hit the ground anyway. Maybe the apple was pulled to earth by some. force. So you, you start to build a, a more and more accurate depiction of the way the world works until, of course, it doesn't anymore. And then you, that, that's when really interesting science happens. Uh, you know, that your, your model breaks, and that has to happen. So this idea that we've got this static truth that everyone is going to pay attention to, and there's some arbiter that can say, oh, nope, you crossed the line, you're not allowed to talk. That's crazy. That's not the way knowledge progresses. That's not the way a free society should conduct itself. So that's all I'm going to say on it. And I appreciate the support that I got during that. You know, I got more emails and text messages about that being taken down than, than anything in, in recent memory. And uh, that was nice. You know, I, it's nice to know that you guys are watching out for me. And frankly, I, I don't really like walking in that line. You know, I, I don't want this 
hopefully you realize I mean, every once in a while I kind of go off the rails on a Wednesday and, and that's more for my benefit than anything else. You know, it's, it's therapy for me. And you guys can just ignore those. This was posted on Friday because of scheduling things. But anyway, you can ignore those, uh, those rants if you want. Uh, but the rest of the time, I don't really like to talk about that kind of stuff because I got enough to talk about with pipes and tobaccos and all that good stuff. We got the garden started. Haven't put anything outside yet because it's been cold. Or actually, I don't think it's froze in a week or so, but it's getting real close. Yeah, it's in the 30s at night. But I got some cucumbers and tomatoes. Tomatoes are not looking great. And but the cucumber is looking fantastic. Got some peppers that haven't yet emerged. I'm still hopeful about them. They're long hots, the big, long, skinny hot peppers. I, I, I like those. I was going to do banana peppers, but we get we, we do a CSA. We get so many sweet and banana pepper type peppers from that CSA that it doesn't make sense to grow our own. And we'll probably get some uh, some beans. I'll, I'll just buy those, uh, you know, as plants when it's time to put them in the ground. So this week is going to be a lot of getting the garden beds ready, which they're pretty close to it. Pretty close to it. My wife has a flower bed that she let get out of control with weeds last year, so I'll have to clean that out so that she can probably do her annual buy a bunch of flowers in pots and not plant them thing. Uh, it's <laughs> We go through this every year. I say, you know, if you want the flowers, you're going to have to plant them. You know, I'll dig the holes, but I want you to figure out where you put Okay, okay. Because when I do it, I'm wrong, you know. And uh, they they never get planted. So. I suppose if I was a better man, I would just plant them and take the... You shouldn't have put them there. But I'm not a better man. Mm. This Cuban mixture is, is, is really good tobacco. Talked about it before. It's 8 o'clock coffee today. Uh, no, it's always 8 o'clock coffee. My buddy Nick sent me a text message last week. He said, have you tried this coffee? It's really good. Or, yeah, I'm, I'm sure it is, but I'm drinking that. I'm not drinking 8 o'clock coffee. <laughs> it's a shame. I, I've gotten to the point where I just like the consistency more than more than anything else and I've had some really good coffees recently um, and I enjoy them but I'm always happy to get back to the 8 o'clock well folks I've taken up enough of your Sunday so I hope your Sunday is going very well. I hope you had a fantastic weekend and you're looking forward to a great week ahead. And with that, I'm going to finish my pipe and coffee and uh, move on with my Sunday. So until we speak again, I look forward to talking to you all again very soon. Goodbye now.